Hello, everyone. Oh, I'm saying there's everybody. Okay, Mike, if you'll start us with the mandala, please. You need to turn on your, there you go. Got it. Sashi Puki Jukshin Metak Chan Rira Bling Shin Yende Gen Padi Sange Shing Du Nik Te Jokun Nam Dak Shing La Chupar Shok Idam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam Niryatayami Sange Chudam Zoki Chognama Chanchu Bardu Dakni Kyatsubti Daki Jinsu Kipe Sunam Ki Drova Penchir Sange Drupar Shok Sange Chudang Zoki Chognama Chanchu Bardu Dakni Kyatsubti Daki Jinsa Kipe Sunam Ki Drola Penchir Sange Drupar Sange Chudang Zoki Chognama Chanchu Bardu Dakni Kyatsubti Daki Jinsu Kipe Sunam Ki Drola Penchir Sange Drupar Show. Okay. Let's do some rejoicing to start the day off. Um, hmm. Let's start with Katharina. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that I connected people, created a small joy for them. My daughter uh, went to the first class and uh, she wants uh, to meet with her friends and uh, they are allowed to bring different uh, games. Uh, to feel more joy. She went uh, to dances. Uh, we were choosing different uh, costumes. Uh, she has lots of new clothes and she likes it a lot. How old is your daughter? Uh, seven, seven years old. Seven years old. Wow. And she's already got a lot of costumes. I don't know. That's a lot to be worrying about. Well, good. So you you help someone else have joy, knowing that the way for you to get joy in your future is to help others, and especially someone as powerful as as your daughter. She's a powerful karmic object. All your family members are. Okay, who's next? Let's go with Daria. Good afternoon. <laughs> Um, uh, I I think I think uh, uh, Sumati, uh, um, you ask uh, ha happened what I had because in, in the next lesson I I, I think I think uh, not not next it's past lesson I think what I. Had, Go ahead. Yeah, what Go ahead what and happy? Russia, if you, Maybe, I don't know. And now I I I help uh, I helped uh, 
I help her. Go ahead, Daria. Go uh, ahead. And grand, me. grand, grand. grand uh, woman with children. Today I help a uh, woman with children. Uh, and uh, I help my mother. And I'm I'm very happy because I I saw his eyes and uh, it, they they these people was very happy. And it's okay. Oh, good. You know, making people happy is an important part of all of this. Knowing again that if you work to make others happy, that's what's going to make happiness appear in your life. Okay, let's go with Alexander. Hello. I retrust that uh, today I went for a walk with my little children and this dedic I dedicate this to the health, fitness, relax, relaxation, and joy of me and also all people and human beings. So you went on a walk with all seven children? No, only with three, <laughs> the youngest, <laughs> the youngest three again. Yeah. That would be that mm. would be a lot of kids to keep exactly. track. Exactly. Exactly. Good. Okay. Let's see who's next. Um, let's go. Tatiana, we're rejoicing. Do you have something you can rejoice in? No, I guess not. Okay, we'll go with Mike. Um, today or yesterday was the first day. I'm helping with uh, I'm helping out with Diamond Mountain social media on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And yesterday was the first um, the first official post that I helped with uh, went on to the Instagram page. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been doing, uh, I've been thinking a lot about social media and I've been helping with social media and already I'm seeing the seeds ripen for my own social media presence um, that I'm feeling more motivated uh, to create for myself uh, because I'm, I'm, in the in the mode of creation for someone else so um it's i can i can see those seeds uh starting to ripen that's pretty cool excellent i don't participate in social media i think it's part of a plot to take over the planet i used to say communist plot to take over the planet now i've got to be careful saying that since i have so many russian and it's nothing against the russian people i just have used the word communist plot for 70 years well not 70 i wasn't saying it when i was a baby but no disrespect meant to the russian people okay who's next is that we did dario we did katrina let's try tatiana again no i'm not hearing Good evening. I'm sorry I'm without camera. That's okay. Do you have something you can rejoice in? Uh, only my serving to my mother and to our community. Uh, we will have uh, on the 25th uh, another course uh, by four steps in Gold Club uh, among Russian and Ukrainian people. I will be moderator of this course. And also I'm continuing uh, to be an administrator in the ACI 5. Well, good for you. Very good. That's setting the seeds for you to have the teachings you want in the future. Excellent. Excellent. Who's uh, I can't ask Cornelia if she's not there. 
Okay. She has she has an appointment. Sorry for this. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's okay. Now my turn. What can I rejoice in? Well. Oh. We we needed to send the, the gentleman we're we're helping get back into uh, the UK due to his being here for twenty years without papers. Uh, we were able to send all the papers by courier to the UK yes, yesterday. And I found out that they should be arriving at the passport office in the UK uh, tomorrow around noon. When we originally sent them yesterday, it looked like they weren't going to get there until Monday. But now the FedEx uh, website says that they'll get there sometime between 8 a.m. and noon tomorrow. So I'm very excited. I, I'm, we're sent the original birth certificate, which I'm always hesitant to do, but they won't accept a photocopy. So I'm just hoping they get to it. And we should find out tomorrow. Then a lady in the cons, uh, consulate in L.A. will see if she can expedite his getting his... Uh, new passport. So I'm very happy about that. And what I've done is by doing this, I've helped myself in the future when I have some important uh, government thing that needs to get done. I've, uh, I've set the seeds for that to go quickly and easily for me. So that's always a good thing. Okay. Today's, I covered everybody, I think, right? Yeah. Today's class is, is difficult. And tomorrow and next week, so class nine, eight and nine are difficult. They're somewhat confusing. So just bear with me. We'll get through it. It's, but it's, it's very important material. It's about proving emptiness. So there are five ways to prove the truth of emptiness using different subjects. I'm going to list them. They're part of the homework, so you'll need to know the names of them. We're not going to go into detail for each of them. So there are five ways to prove the truth of emptiness. The emptiness of one or many, which is the one we're going to do in detail. The sliver of diamond proof, which is that every piece of a pure diamond is just as pure as another piece. So every object's emptiness is 100% empty. Number three, denial of the things which exist or do not exist could arise. Number four, four possibilities. And number five, the proof of dependent origination. Before we dive into these proofs, we need to learn a little bit about Buddhist logic. And when we're talking about Buddhist logic, the reason we're doing that is because the Buddhist logic is used in the debate ground. Debate is a very, very important part of the learning process in the monastery. I'm not particularly good at debate. My wife's actually a lot of fun to watch in debate. She gets pretty animated. So... We're going to discuss this in a little more detail. And the reason to discuss Buddhist logic is we need to prove the spiritual things we cannot perceive with our senses. And that's what Buddhist logic can do. Without Buddhist logic, we can't really even take refuge because we have no basis for which to understand past and future lives. If we base our refuge on a simple belief or because someone else told us about it, it won't hold up when things get going, when the going gets tough in our, in our studies. So logic is very simply this. It serves as a basis for belief. It is a hard subject. The readings are difficult, but I urge you to stick with it. to learn how to think about the why and how things exist and the way they do. Logic, Buddhist logic, 
helps us get there. Then to apply this Buddhist logic to our understanding of our behavior. So I'm going to need to share the screen now. So let's see if I can do this without everything falling apart on me. Share screen number two. I need to get this. Oops. Okay. Let's see if I get this to work. You'd be seeing components of a logical state. Now, hmm. there we go, almost there. Okay, so components of a logical statement. There are three or four parts to every logical statement in a debate. There's the subject, the assertion, the reason, and then sometimes, but not always, an example. So when we set up a debate, we need to set up the subject, the assertion, the reason, and an example. So we're going to use this to to go through the proof of one or many. Consider the three knowledges, the subject, the assertion, they do not exist really, the reason, because they do not exist really as one or as many. Example, they are like a reflection in the mirror. We're not gonna go through further into the three knowledges in very much detail. So back to line two, they do not exist really. Really is code for self-existently, independently from of anything, in, the, in the existence from their own side. Now, when we say things do not exist really, we our minds interpret that at this stage in our Buddhist career, that they do not exist at all. This is not what we're trying to assert. We're not saying they don't exist at all. We're saying they don't exist really. They don't exist self-existently. So, let's see, I need to go to my next slide. So consider the three knowledges, the basic knowledge, path of knowledge, and knowledge of all things. They do not exist really. They are not self-existent because they do not exist really as one or as many. They are like the reflection in a mirror. We can say because they do not exist really as one thing or many things, They do not exist at all. They do not exist really. They do not exist as, they do exist as many things. There are three of them. 
So again, we have to be careful what we're saying to make sure we understand. Do they exist? Yes. The three knowledges exist. They appear to us and we perceive them. So they do exist and there are many. So what do you mean with the reason they do not exist really? What we're saying is they do not exist in a way. Hang on. They do not exist self-existently. So if they do not exist really, they do not exist self-existently. They don't exist as one, nor do they exist as many. And that's because they're like a reflection of an object in a mirror. The object in the mirror appears there, but it really isn't. You can put your hands, but you can't put your hand to it. The object you see in the mirror is a reflection. It isn't really the solid presence there. So in the Svatantrika school, hang on a minute. My computer's giving me. In the Svatantrika school, to exist really means they exist in a way that most of us see it, like they're self-existent, like they're out there on their own side. This is how we view all things. Is it valid to view things this way? Yes. Yes, we are seeing them. We, the three knowledges are out there. Is it correct? No. We think they're just there, and that is incorrect. We think they're there self-existently, and that's not true. So again, we need to be able to, we need to be sure to understand it is valid. Are we having a valid perception? Yes, they are there. Or is it a correct perception? No, because we think they're there self-existently, and that is incorrect. So consider the three knowledges. They do not exist really from their own side. So they do not exist really as one thing or as many things. Let me turn off the... So... I need to resize my window here. There we go. So what's the point of all this? The point of all this is we're going to use logic and to, uh, next class, we go into this in much greater detail. So the point here is you need to be careful in your definitions and things like that when you're going through a debate. When I first, the first sub time I was exposed to this material was during the diamond cutter course in course six. So you can imagine how that might have been very confusing. So again, let's say that again. Consider the three knowledges, the basic knowledge, path of knowledge, knowledge of all things. They do not exist really because they do not exist really as one or as many. If they don't exist as one and they don't exist as many, they don't exist. If they don't really exist as one or really exist as many, they don't really exist. So we know even though we can see them, we know they're not self-existent. So we have proven that they do not exist really. They're like a reflection in a mirror. So how does that really affect what we're thinking and doing in our every, everyday life? It's important. The three knowledges are there. They're just not there really. They're not the way we think it is. 
So why do we perceive things like this in the way we do? It's due to the ripening of karma from past behavior. I think we all accept that and understand that. So let's let's think about that in a slightly different way. Can we turn a pen into a diamond by force of will? No. Can we change it into that by force of karma? Yes. Because the pen is a pen due to our projecting it, our karma ripening to project it, we could have the karma to ripen it as a diamond wand or a wand of gold or whatever you want to describe it as. It's possible. But we need to have the karma for that to happen. We just can't will it to happen. So for me, I wake up, as I've said before, I wake up every morning thinking I could have no longer have Parkinson's. That is possible because of karma and emptiness. But it's not going to happen if I just think about it. I need to continue to help others to make things not make things inconvenient for others, go out of my way to make things easy and usable for everyone. If I can do that, then there's the possibility that my Parkinson's will disappear. So for instance, my helping my friend David White get back into Britain. Instead of having him have to try and take care of everything because he's still recovering from his fall and his head injury, instead of making it inconvenient for him to get everything done, we took it upon ourselves to go through the process, go through all the documentation, all the steps, to get his passport and his birth certificate to Britain. Not only that, I'm going to look into getting a replacement copy for his birth certificate because we sent the original. I really didn't want to send the original, but we sent it because that's what they required. So if that gets lost, he's he has a problem. So anticipating that, trying to make things not inconvenient for him, I'm going to see if I can't order a replacement government certified gifts of birth certificate, gift certificate, birth certificate for him so that he'll have that in the future if something gets lost. If it doesn't get lost, he'll have two copies, which can never hurt. Now, what I found very interesting, and I had the karma for this to ripen, is that he had a copy of his birth certificate on him. I don't know how many of you carry your birth certificate around with you. I certainly don't. In fact, I do think I know where it is. Well, I do know where it is. But I had to cut for, because I'm trying to help others, not inconvenience them, I had that karma ripen because David had his gifts at his birth certificate. If he hadn't, we couldn't get him out of the country because they needed that document. So it would have been very inconvenient. So because I've been helping others, trying to make things less inconvenient for others, I believe that ripened with David having the document I needed to send to Britain. Now, there's those that would argue that couldn't have possibly happened in this lifetime. They can argue that all they want. I'm doing things to help others. And in doing so, that karma came back and ripened for me pretty quickly. So... What is this this bottom line, as we've discussed many times, see yourself doing for others what you want to experience in the future, and it will happen. Why? Because the nature of you and me in our world comes from karma ripening in our minds. Objects do not have their own identity. This is what we mean by karma and emptiness, two sides of the same coin. So, Buddhist logic, the debate ground, 
all of that's coming up. Course 13 is an entire course on Buddhist logic. If you think you're confused now, wait till Course 13. I can guarantee you'll be confused. I'm confused every time I teach it. Okay. I think that's, this is a really short class. I wanted to put class nine into class today, but I think it's better to have you think about, read the student notes, memorize the proof of one or many, so let's go over that one more time. Consider the three knowledges. They do not exist really. That's the, the, the subject is consider the three knowledges. The assertion they do not exist really. That's what you're trying to prove. So you're, here's the subject, the three knowledges. Now you're trying to prove they do not exist really. Reason, because they do not exist really as one or as many. They are, for example, like reflection in the mirror. So you have the three knowledges. They do not exist really. When you see something like that, and you see they do not exist really, well, that's saying they don't exist at all. No. When you think that, stop and think carefully what the, the code word here is exist really. What we're saying there is self-existently. So consider the three knowledges. They do not exist self-existently because they do not exist really. They do not exist self-existently as one or as many because they're like a reflection in the mirror. The image in the mirror is not real. It's not there by itself. If I leave, if, I'm, if it was self-existent, my image would be in a mirror whether I was there or not. But it obviously goes away when I walk away. So the importance, I think maybe the important thing to, to realize when you're, we're discussing things like this is look for the word that's the key, the code, <clears throat> the code word. So when you see some, when I assert they do not exist really, and you stop and you think, but I see them. They do exist. I'm not saying they don't exist. They don't exist. I'm saying they don't exist self-existently. I know I repeat that. We'll repeat it more and more. But it's really important to drum that into your head and understand that. So we'll use a different uh, debate, a silly debate next class but it, I think it may make it more clear. So let's consider today's class, a brief attempt to, to put the concept of Buddhist logic. Well, here's, we talked about refuge. This is an important aspect. In order to believe in refuge, in order to take the refuge commitments, you need to believe in past and future lives. So we're going to use logic to prove past and future lives. Because if you don't believe in past and future lives, then there's no reason to have any kind of morality and you'll behave inappropriately. So in order to prove, in fact, we mentioned that briefly at the beginning of class, Buddhist logic is used to prove things you can't see. I can't see a past life. I can't see a future life. But Buddhist logic has enabled me to understand that if I believe in karma and emptiness, which I do, then the only logical explanation for karma and emptiness and for karma ripening in this life is because I had a past life. But we'll go into that proof in greater detail later. So let's dedicate what we did. Rejoice in these short classes because we're going to get to classes that are two hours long. And by then you'll probably be wishing back for the days when they were only 30 or 40 minutes. Okay.
by the goodness of what we've just done, may all beings complete the collection of merit and wisdom and thus gain the two ultimate bodies that merit and wisdom made. So hang in there. This is, we're getting into some difficult material and I'll do my best to present it clearly, but sometimes it confuses me too. So we'll, we'll, do, we'll have a more complete class on the next class. I think this will all make much more sense, but I would really like you to memorize the uh, proof of emptiness of one or many. Okay. We'll see everybody. Oh, now let's see. On Monday, the mon next Monday, I have a doctor's appointment. So we don't see each other again till Friday. Excuse me, till Thursday. Right? We're not meeting Monday, we're meeting Thursday. Okay. Okay. Thank you. This is this is hard stuff to teach, and I know it's hard to wrap your head around, but I really do believe next Thursday we're going to be able to make this make much more sense. That's my goal. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Благодарю. I'm not sure why it's not turning off.